Danny watches a lot of television and movies. John does not. Listen in as she tells him about what she's watching and he tries to make sense of it all. Welcome to Watching My Stories with Danny and John. Hello, everyone. Hi, everybody. <laughs> what? <laughs> oh, um, you caught me in a yawn. Oh, sorry. And uh, not that I'm not Bless excited you. about this. Or something. Bless me. <laughs> I don't know. I'm Danny. Ah, oh, chew. I'm John. <laughs> and this is watching my stories. Hello. Hello. Um. I say good day, sir. Yes. So when last we spoke, we talked about Thanksgiving stuff. We had a good Thanksgiving break. We hope everyone else did as well. Mm-hmm. We are counting down the days to our Christmas break. Mm-hmm. Um, but we do have one more show before before that so yes we'll talk about that later i have a as i would say a crap ton <laughs> of stuff to talk about lots of movies lots of shows it's been i mean it's basically been three weeks since i talked about anything other than thanksgiving so yeah so it's been three <laughs> three weeks of watching stuff to anybody other than me yes yeah you've talked a lot over the last three weeks i mean <laughs> not no, I don't mean it like that. I know. I it's mean, fine. Yeah. Okay. I know. I know Sorry. you've watched a lot because you've talked about it. Yes. Do, 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 do. Moving on. Please. Okay, let's just get into it. I'm going to try and keep some things as quickly as possible if I don't feel like they need a lot of time, just oh. so we can spend time on the ones that do. Okay. And then we're going to discuss, I've got movies, TVs, TVs, <laughs> TV shows. <laughs> it's early in the morning. And... um. And then a little bit of news, and okay. then we're going to discuss Hugh Grant in the Actors Corner. Wow, that sounds like a full show to me. Yes. Okay, Woo-hoo. so mo- starting with movies. Uh, the first one I'm going to talk about is one called Run on Hulu. This uh, starred Sarah Paulson, so I was like, oh, cool, you know. And I saw that it was kind of like that um, Munchausen by proxy deal, you know, where a parent, like, poisons and keeps the kids sick mm-hmm. so that they feel better about themselves or whatever the this part of the, i don't you know i don't know enough about the disease uh, let's not get into the why it just happens <laughs> anyway um so i watched this it was like they were trying to make a thriller slash horror movie about this um that's basically what it is is she's been um she she's been making her kids sick all her life and so the kid starts to figure it out and the battle between the child and the mother then at that point for the child to try and get clear and safe what is sarah paulson the mother yes the, okay um so here's my issue number one we've we've actually seen enough of this that it was it was a weird decision for anyone to make a movie like this um we we know the whole gypsy uh gypsy rose deal with her and her mom Dee. Dee. that's a real life thing um you know gypsy rose ended up killing her mother Dee, Dee because she f- found out that she had been keeping her sick all her life um if you want to know more about that true story there's an actual hulu docuseries that um joey king and patricia arquette starred in um that was called the act that was really well done um, there's a lot of documentaries about the real Gypsy Rose and Dee Dee. Very fascinating story. And then we had that other um, Amy Adams HBO series, which was kind of the same thing. And I can't remember what that was called. Um, but that was also really well done. <clears throat> it just felt like it was a weird subject to try and um, make a quote unquote horror or scary movie about. Because there was also that other movie. There's another movie too with the young girl that i love that same thing her mom ended up keeping her sick all her life so anyway we've seen enough of this that it was just weird and it was just like it didn't have any sort of effect you know it didn't scare you because we knew we know enough about this now you know what i mean and the whole the whole condition and all of that so it was just weird and i and i kept watching and just because it's sarah paulson and of course she can she can she's fantastic Mm -hmm. um but it's just not worth watching there's a lot of better things to watch whether it be real or or made up see i i would think that that's a good premise for a horror movie if they do it right and it would have been uh, if we if we didn't have so many already out there see you know I, what I mean? I, yeah i i think i understand what you're saying but there seems to me that you take any uh situation 
you know, that that's where somebody's inflecting ill will upon somebody else. There's a lot of all of it, right? A lot of movies have been done about, you know, um, you know, d- divorced ex-husband coming back and beating up a woman or yeah. that sort of thing. And it just depends on who's doing it and how it's done. And I would imagine since none of the other, the previous ones have been done as a h- actual horror. Right. If they did it right, it would have been different. It would have been, I'm not going to say good because I think the thing is awful, yeah. but. It wasn't, you know, it, it wasn't, I don't know what they wanted it to be. I don't know what, if they wanted it to be a horror or just mm. a thriller or whatever, but it just, it didn't work and it didn't land because, because we have a lot of other things. Because that, it ended up being the same as the rest. Um, No, just because it's not scary anymore. Okay. We've seen it. We've okay. seen it in real life and we've seen other shows or movies do this situation better. And so okay. this just wasn't good. I got you. Yeah. I understand. It what just you're wasn't saying. well done. Okay. Okay. Moving on. And that was run on Hulu if you have any. But I would suggest go watch the act <clears throat> on Hulu. Um, next one is Dolly Parton's uh, new Christmas musical called Christmas on the Square. This is on Netflix. Um, this is... Uh, huge cast you know so i was super excited about it. obviously dolly parton jennifer lewis who you know diva extraordinaire uh josh segura um who i love from arrow <laughs> um janine mason who won so you think you could dance i was super excited to watch her dance and she had maybe 10 seconds of dancing in it uh treat wilson who gorgeous voice loved hearing him sing again and christine bransky which of course hello um so i was super excited to watch this dolly parton's wrote all the music and everything and um it was pretty awful and it's not just it was awful kind of from start to finish now everyone in it's very good everyone who sings is very wonderful like i said treat williams had a whole solo song that was just beautiful um but the production value of this was Mm -hmm. awful Mm -hmm. i don't know why they didn't give her more money um debbie allen directed this and did the choreography um i don't know why they didn't give them more more money her choreography is fantastic um but it looks like it was all shot in a very small studio Mm -hmm. which is just weird for a movie that's supposed to be christmas on the square like go outside and they never did such a thing and it looks like it's all fluorescent lighting like it was it's very weird it's very weird um so that threw me off from the start then um really most of the music i did not enjoy i did not like a lot of the songs which again is hard for me to get through were they bad choices from existing songs or were they new no, songs she that wrote went... this whole new oh, musical oh. yeah um that's too bad so yeah it was and and again i didn't really like this the story again was very we've known it it's kind of a scrooge thing christine bransky owns this town and she wants to sell it to um to have someone build a mall oh the 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 name of the company is cheetah mall hello um so (laughs) that sounds like something from the three stages (laughs) yeah so she's evicting everyone in the town you know and they're all sad and that's what it's about is overcoming and then trying to turn her heart you know blah 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 anyway there's nice moments but really it was it i couldn't get past kind of the production of it all um it's not debbie allen's fault i really do think it's just it was netflix not giving look dolly parton needs to be celebrated there's this whole thing right now about her not getting the medal of freedom and obama was like i'm he said i'm calling biden on this because she needs mm-hmm. to get it you know she's stood up for black lives matter she's done a lot she's given money for these vaccines yeah um she's done things over the years she was a producer of buffy the vampire slayer so as far as i'm concerned she's been well, that's at the top she's of the been list. it for a long time <laughs> that seals um, the deal for the medal of freedom <laughs> Hey, some people have their priorities. Um, She's just, she's absolutely lovely. And look, there was one line, which I've talked to you about because we are still, um, we are still grieving and, and in quite, quite that mourning period Mm -hmm. um, of Roxy. And there's one line in the movie that I wrote down immediately. I told my therapist she was thrown back by it. And so, as, and my therapist goes, Dolly Parton is a freaking treasure. You know, yeah. and it was like, so anyway, the line is, um, 
grief is just love with nowhere to go um so if nothing else you don't have to sit through the musical take that line and and do with it what you will right um but i it's hard because i want to tell people it's dolly parton and and go and enjoy Mm -hmm. i i you know for me to not like a musical and especially to not like the music when it comes from her too. Mm-hmm. That's really hard for me. Yeah. Um, but everything kind of threw it off. Everyone's very good in it. And so is Dolly. You know, she's, she plays the guardian angel in it and she's adorable. Um, so other than the music and the aesthetics, it's, it's okay. And the story, <laughs> everyone in it's good at what they do. So if you just fast forward to you see someone you like and pause it. Yeah. Yeah. It's good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Anyway, so okay. that's Christmas on the Square on Netflix. All right. Um, the next movie I'm going to talk about is also a Netflix movie called Hillbilly Elegy. This is, everyone's heard of it. It's with Glenn Close and Amy Adams. Uh, this is a true story of this guy, J.D. Vance, who grew up in Ohio um, with a family that was from Kentucky, which is why I guess it's called Hillbilly Elegy. But that's based on his his book that he wrote about growing up with, kind of a mother that um had a lot of addiction issues and and things like that and his grandmother who was played by glenn close who eventually took over raising him and he eventually got to yale law school and became a lawyer and did really well for his life um but this is kind of a a section of his childhood um that he was he's remembering back to when he was like 12 or 13 something like that and we see the current day is when he's actually in Yale law school and he has to go home um because his mom has overdosed again and she's in the hospital and all this sort of thing so spoilers yeah look you're you've either watched it probably or not um i know everyone's loving this movie it's a ron howard film uh, he did wonderful with it. Um, I just wasn't a fan of the story. Mm-hmm. Um, I feel like we've seen it a million times, you know, where it's like you got to deal with your <clears throat> your abusive slash addicted parents and, you know, family conquers all and all that sort of stuff. And, and I'm just not a fan of that. Yeah. Um, that, you know. It, it sounded to me like when you first talked about it, you actually would have enjoyed it more if the decision went the other way. For sure. And, and and because of that one decision, it kind of, it didn't ruin the rest of it, but it, it tainted it to where well, it was, it's it, not higher on your list. It was difficult. Look, the kid, the way the story goes is this kid is in Yale Law School. He needs a summer internship at a law um, firm in order to pay for his next year of college. Mm-hmm. He has interviews lined up for the next day and he gets this call that he has to go home. So he drives from Yale to ohio to go Mm -hmm. take care of his mother who as soon as he walks in the door she starts abusing him and calling him fancy and you know all that sort of crap because she feels like crap about herself Mm -hmm. and is treating him horribly he he splits up he finds a rehab for her puts it on a bunch of different credit cards and instead she walks out and says i don't want to do this um you know and so everywhere along the line during the story i'm like dude leave Mm -hmm. leave you know Mm -hmm. just leave her she doesn't want it leave her you know and yet he keeps staying. So it was mm-hmm. kind of ruined the whole way along because I'm just like, this is not your problem. Go yeah. take care of your life, you know. And yet he well, kept sticking around yeah. because in the flashbacks with his grandmother, his grandmother keeps enforcing, this is your family. You stick up for your family. You stay yeah. with your family, you know, blah, 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 yeah. blah. I just don't believe that when you're getting abused like that, you do such a thing. Yeah. I mean, that sense of obligation and responsibility is huge. It's sure. so strong that sure. you, you you will make bad decisions throughout your life because of it, <laughs> right. unless you're able to be really objective about it, which most people aren't. No, not without help. Usually. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So yeah, and then it's too bad. It was even more depressing because then at the end they show the real people. They have uh, video clips of the real people that. Uh, that were in this and it talks about jd and he got his law degree and blah 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 and he got married we saw a girlfriend in in the in the movie and they got married and then he chooses to move back to ohio to be closer to his family and stuff and i'm like yale law school and all that work and everything and you could have gone and you know made a lot of money and instead he goes to ohio but anyway so it's just it's my personal thing that 
you know, I have issues with that. I think a lot of people love this movie, obviously, because there's only about five movies in the running. They're going to get nominated for Oscar. Um, you know, it's it's fine. And I get it. I also feel like we've seen this a lot. Sure. And I think I'm very tired of that, too. And usually I, Amy Adams is in it. Yes. Seems like. <laughs> yeah. Um, so any, and they did, she was wonderful. Glenn Close was wonderful. You know, there's nothing bad to say about the movie itself. It's sure. made very well. Right. I just have a personal, you know, issue with the story, but okay. I think there are people out there that will, lo- I guess my parents watched it and they loved it. So, you know, it's just a matter of personal opinion sure. when it comes I, to that. I do have one question about it and yeah. it, it was kind of a spoiler, I guess. Um, so he, you say he did get his law degree. So after he went back and tried to take care of his mom, he did eventually go back to law school and he did get his, his law degree and go on and become a lawyer. Yep. Okay. Yep. Well, I mean, good for him. Yeah. And then he wrote this book and I, I can imagine the book is probably way better because it was, it was difficult to take kind of just this little cross section of his childhood and this little cross section of what he's dealt with in this one day um, when he was grown up. And, and I can imagine this, the book goes into far more detail sure. and, and what actually, you know, they go in, they talk a little bit in the, in the thing about the grandmother and, you know, the, her husband abusing her and how then she, you know, passed it on to Amy Adams and her sister. And, you know, it's like, Again, generations abusing generations yeah. and, you know, all sure. of that. So, yeah. but I'm sure the book is a lot better mm-hmm. just because you can get into more stuff. Yeah, books often are. Yeah. So, anyway. Okay. So, that's my take on Hillbilly Elegy <laughs> and that is on Netflix. Um, The next movie is another Netflix movie. This is The Christmas Chronicles 2. This is the sequel to The Christmas Chronicles. <laughs> this is where Kurt Russell is Santa Claus. Um, and in this one, we spend the time in the North Pole. Um, Goldie Hawn is Mrs. Claus. And we knew that in the first movie. She came out in the end, which I thought was uh, very adorable. Um, I also love that Oliver Hudson was adorable. in the first one. Adorable. Um, so, yeah. So, this one is is... I actually think I liked this one better um i don't know why the la- the first one was enjoyable um but it was a little all over the place and this one i really we learned a lot more about um kind of the magic of the north pole and and history and stuff and it just felt a little bit more fun mm-hmm. i don't know um so i i don't really know how to talk about it's like there's this elf that was banned from the north pole and now he comes back and he wants to get revenge and open up his own south pole and make it better than the north pole and thinks he's going to be better than santa and you know and that's kind of the whole he takes the christmas star and you know and so kurt russell and it's about these kids that this one you know these kids from the first one and she's a true believer and uh she's miserable on her christmas vacation and um so she and she gets involved in this whole thing and so it's it's well done i like it i love it i love the little elves i love you know the whole idea of it it's just very magical and Mm -hmm. and whimsical and i I love kurt russell as santa claus he's very cool yeah um you know so i don't know i just it, it really it felt good and and it was enjoyable so you recommend it I do. Okay. I go. I I definitely would watch both of them. I sure. if you didn't watch the last one that came out a couple of years ago, watch the first one and then watch this one. It's very enjoyable and really, really, really family friendly. And if somebody liked the first one, they'll like this one. Yeah, definitely, okay. definitely. Okay. Good. Yeah. yeah. So that's Christmas Chronicles <clears throat> two. All right. Oh, and the guy who plays the villain in this one, um, he's the kid from Deadpool two that was also the villain. You know the the australian or new zealand kid i forget i don't know exactly which one he's from remember the no okay well i love deadpool too so i guess i've watched I, it more. i like deadpool too as well but i don't remember the, the kid who was the kid who he was in prison with initially and then he's the one who broke out the um oh, what is his name gigantor not and then he was he could throw fire and that was the whole point of the movie was they had oh. that's why James Brolin came back because he eventually kills James Brolin's family in the yes. future and yes yes yeah. yes so yep. that's the kid in this okay and so okay. it was kind of cute to see him again but he, he felt more more mean in this one than he did in Deadpool 2 that poor kid man <laughs> yeah all he's going to be able to do is villain <laughs> <clears throat> he's good um okay next one is a movie called Happiest Season this is on Hulu 
this is there's a lot to talk about with this one um i'm gonna try to not make it a huge thing um so this is written and and directed by clea duvall that's important um she you will know uh, you don't watch she's on handmaid's tale which you don't watch she was on veep which you don't watch um, i wouldn't know her you but wouldn't that... know her if you saw her you would okay, okay. um anyway uh this stars uh Mackenzie davis and Kristen stewart um there's also victor garber and mary steenburgen and um allison brie and aubrey plaza like it's a lot of people on it it's really great anyway this was touted as i thought a rom-com oh dan dan levy is in it too um, oh yeah yeah it was touted as like the first lesbian rom-com i think i thought and so I was really excited to watch it. And it's not really a rom-com at all. Um, it was actually really serious. Um, so, but I still, I loved it. So there's two things to this though. And and just taking it on its surface and just trying to get through it. And as a straight woman, you know, straight cis woman, I, I, I probably shouldn't speak to a lot of things, but I'm just going to give my well, my the, take on the, it. Yeah, this podcast is your take. Yeah. So, so um, I, I I loved it. I loved the story. I loved the two of them together. And I can't believe how much I'm loving Kristen Stewart now. You know, I, I didn't watch the Twilight movies, but I really couldn't stand her during that time. Sure. But now, thanks to Charlie's Angels, Charlie's Angels changed <laughs> changed her for me. And she's so, and she's just as good in this. Like I really mm -hmm. enjoyed her. And I actually just watched. Oh, I didn't put that on here. I actually just watched that underwater movie where remember it came out like earlier in the year where they were like in this. They're in the bottom of the Mariana. Is it Mariana ditch? Whatever it is, <laughs> ditch. <laughs> what is it? Trench. Trench. Um, <laughs> And they get stuck down there. Anyway, I just watched that her and that. She's great. So anyway, okay. I've turned a leaf on Kristen Stewart. Um, and I've always loved Mackenzie Davis. So, uh, yeah. Um, so this is a story. We come in and they're a year into their relationship <clears throat> and they're going going to Mackenzie Davis's uh, family for Christmas. She invites her to go there. Kristen Stewart's all excited. She gets a ring. She's going to propose to her while they're there. And on the way there, Mackenzie Davis decides to tell Kristen Stewart I'm not out to my family. So we're going to have to get in, get in the closet <laughs> and quick dialing back in the closet. <laughs> exactly. Um, and, um, and that's where we kind of go. And it's like, you know, again, Kristen Stewart's like, I don't want to have to do that, but I love you. So, you mm -hmm. know, you, you'll do this in your own time. So we'll, I'll play along and, and it, but it was even, you need to be in the closet too. Like, don't tell my parents that you're a lesbian either. You know, mm -hmm. it was very, so that feels very weird and awkward anyway. So there's all these family issues. It's a very strange kind of very conservative. There's three daughters. They're all have issues, you know, and that sort of thing. Yet they put on this outward appearance of everything's perfect. Mm -hmm. So it goes through all of that and it, and it kind of does tear the relationship apart in a lot of ways. Um, which makes full sense and you know in this weird way they end up coming back together at the end that's kind of on one side how the movie goes and how i enjoyed it just looking at that mm -hmm. on the flip side there's number one it's a lot about coming out mm -hmm. which i'm i don't know how to say it without saying it i'm kind of I, i'm over the coming out stories not because I don't like them, but because I think as a society, we should be past the coming out stories. Mm -hmm. I think it's, I, f you know, I, f I do live in this utopian thing in my mind where I believe no child or adult should ever have to come out. I think from birth, parents at this point in this world, parents should be opening up their children to yeah. any possibility yeah. and so there's never a coming out ever again that's my hope yeah. for the future so it's not that i'm i i hate saying i'm tired of these coming out stories i understand that still in this world and especially with generations there are coming out stories um but it was also um there was a lot of weird you know like i ended up hating Mackenzie davis's character she because of that but yet i had to keep in my head so let me tell you a story aubrey plaza shows up as like her best friend from school and aubrey mm -hmm. plaza tells kristen stewart this whole story about when they were in school um they became lovers and it was their first experience and they fell in love and yet when someone accused them of that in school 
Mackenzie Davis said no, she was lying and called her a lesbian, you know, and said, no, it's not me. She's just obsessed with me, all that sort of thing, and became one of the popular kids. And so they split, obviously, Mm -hmm. um, and treated her horribly. So then I'm like, oh, okay, I'm trying to forgive in high school. That's a hard time and you're different and I'm trying to forgive. And, you know, okay, people do that. People do that even straight or get, you know, like people are awful in high school, right? So, okay, get past that. Well, they're awful after high school too. Right. But but then as these 30-year-old something women that are coming home and she's still doing this and she starts treating Kristen Stewart worse and worse, you know, it's mm-hmm. like as, as she gets more into her family, she's pushing her away. Um, she's, her old friends from school are back around, an ex-boyfriend is back around and she's just completely ignoring Kristen Stewart the whole time. And I'm mm-hmm. like, that's really rude. <laughs> you that's know what one I way mean? to put it, yeah. And then there's this real explosion where one of the sisters figures out that they're actually together as a couple. And she outs her to the parents. And Kristen Stewart was already pissed and was already leaving. Mm-hmm. And instead of giving into that again, Mackenzie Davis's character goes, she's lying that's not true blah 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 she's just my roommate you know and all this stuff and it's like the pain you can feel the daggers you can feel in Kristen Stewart's heart you know what I mean Mm -hmm. it's it was so awful I mean it was just so awful and I was a complete mess um to 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 have the person that you love so much kind of just you know but again I keep trying to go she's in a place she's in a place I've never been you know, mm-hmm. she finally she throughout that conversation, she comes out to her parents and tells the truth. Mm-hmm. But like Kristen Stewart says, she goes, it's too late and walks away. And I get it because that hurt and that kind of who are you type mm-hmm. thing. Um, yeah. You think, you know, somebody and they'll have your back or, or stand up for you for when the whatever. time comes. Yeah. And, and to consistently go through that for such a period of time. Yeah. That changes that person in your eyes. Yeah. And I, she was learning a lot about her and her life mm-hmm. there. So it was kind of like, I don't know who this person really right. is. Um, now over whatever it happens and then they get back together and she apologizes and all that stuff. And that's lovely. Um, but there's a, the best part about it is again, as a straight person watching and going, uh, we got to watch someone come out again, <laughs> you know, and that sort of thing. Yeah. And again, I'm not annoyed by the coming out. I'm annoyed that it has to happen. And again, I'm just, and I'm pissed off at any parents that again would treat their child in any negative way. And I understand that people are going through this even right now at this moment. So I'm not, I, I, I feel full sympathy. I just wish it were different. It's just my However, I can't explain. I just wish it were different. I just yeah, wish just we lived in a world clear. where everyone was just accepted, period. Uh, right. It just pisses me right. off. Yeah. So, <clears throat> but Kristen Stewart, she walks out of the house after she obviously denies uh, her in, in a relationship and all that. And Dan Levy is there. And he has this fantastic, wonderful speech, which puts everything in perspective <laughs> of... He says, you know, to her, what was your coming out story? And she goes, I told my parents and they said they love me no matter what. (laughs) And he Mm -hmm. goes, he goes, that's wonderful. And I'm so happy that that happened for you. But for me, my father kicked me out of the house. And for everyone, it's a different story. Mm -hmm. And everyone has to do it in their own time, in their own way. Mm -hmm. And they have to know what the outcome is going to be when it when it happens, you know. And it, it was a very beautifully written speech and it put a lot of things into perspective and of course nothing that we don't know already you know uh, yes obviously again I just in my head I'm just like no one should have to go through it but you know I understand that they do Mm -hmm. and um and as being touted as this first kind of lesbian whatever you want to call it whether it's a rom-com or a dramedy or whatever um I'm glad that it exists I'm I really enjoyed it I probably will watch it again Mm -hmm. um, because I, I did enjoy it that much. You know, I think I'm, I feel like I'm being weird in the way that I'm saying this sort of negative, like, you know, about coming out stories. It's just, you know, I just like, I don't, and here's another thing is that I'm glad it also wasn't smooth. You know what I mean? Because again, I think also we can get lost sometimes in the coming out stories where the parents are just like, Oh, you're right. And I love you no matter what, because that isn't Mm -hmm. the case for everyone. So, um, I think it does make sense to show that, 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 um, there are parents who don't accept. And, um, I just, again, I just wish 
none of that mattered you know right. um and again it it was it was an interesting time of watching that and then having elliot page come out as trans and watching the response and I'm going off on a tangent here, but watching the response that day was absolutely wonderful. Um, I'm sure there was a lot of negative shit out there. I didn't, I, I didn't pay attention, sure. but I did see that immediately every story uh, that came out did not use her dead name. Um, immediately IMDB, Wikipedia, everything. They dropped her dead name, his dead name, sorry. And they, it was it was Elliot immediately like everyone knew what to do mm-hmm. even Netflix has gone through and they're changing they're getting rid of her, his dead name on everything you know mm-hmm. and so it's like it was like this thing of just okay we're getting somewhere here you know where people are understanding what's important um or what or or not not hesitating you know what I mm-hmm. mean there isn't there isn't that moment of hesitation on anymore of this or that or whatever and and again that just that made me um i hope that he's very happy and satisfied with what he saw as well i'm sure there was negative crap but i i only wanted to see what what people were doing that was by and large the the entertainment industry is much more progressive than most of society so in truth though again we we want to say that but this is technically the first real lesbian movie that's been in a big release and had a oh. big, you know, so not really when uh, you get to it. Just to be clear, I was referring to Elliot Page. I know. Okay. But to say that the entertainment industry is is whatever, you know, liberal or more accepting or whatever, not really. And I'm pointing out because this is kind of the first lesbian movie that there that exists. You know what I mean? So we are still behind. I mean, the whole diversity issues and and all of that. Yeah, I'm not. I I wasn't arguing that. Yes, there should have been this uh, a movie between, you know, two gay characters in this story much earlier, much sooner. We should be past this. All I was saying was, you know, in Elliot Page's case, that there was no resistance. It's just like, oh, okay, Yeah. And and all the changes were made that, you know, the studios and the and the entertainment outlets you know should make uh, all of them are made just as a, a you know okay right not a big deal right that, and, that's what i was talking about and another kind of tangent on this though is you know for our i think for our generations and everything we're thrilled to have this movie out and um and hopefully it's the f- first of many and who gives a crap of who the main characters are as long as there's romance involved right mm-hmm. um but with the trans community i I think the younger generation is um, so much more used to the fluidity of, of everyone basically. But I, I can say that there's been a few shows now that I've watched where there's a trans um, actor in the role and they do point it out like in one line Mm -hmm. in the beginning and then it's never spoken of again. And I love it. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like, and honestly, what was I watching? I think I talked about it, the craft the reboot craft legacy or whatever it was. I had no idea. I'd never seen the actor before. I didn't know who she was or anything. And they threw out one line and I was just like, Oh, okay. You know, whatever. (laughs) And went about it and it wasn't a thing. And, um, and even in the new saved by the bell reboot, Mm -hmm. you know, I told you I was watching going, I know that girl. I know her. Where do I know her from? And sorry. And I had to look, look her up and um she was on that mindy kaling show Mm -hmm. that i don't remember the name of um and i was like oh yeah you know and again they threw out one line about it having the most trans following Mm -hmm. you know whatever on in the school or something like that and i was like okay you know and it's like those younger generations that are watching it doesn't matter why even put the line in i don't know other well, than for the it, older people that are watching. But I wouldn't have even you're questioned not, anything. But yet that's you. Yeah. There are a lot out there that are watching it going, ah, that girl looks funny or I didn't, you know what? <laughs> Both girls um, are gorgeous. I know. I know. But I'm just saying that they're out there that the certain number of people are watching and, and thinking about it. I guess. And if you throw out that line, it like gets it over with. <laughs> I guess. You know, so it's not distracting from the show. I guess. I yeah. don't know. And I haven't finished Saved by the Bell yet, so I don't know if it ever comes back into play or anything. But, um, you know, the point is she's the most popular girl in the school. So 
who cares? Right. You know, but that's kind of what I love. That's what I'm hoping we're getting to is that these kids maybe teach their parents, you know, when mm-hmm. their parents say, do you have a little boyfriend in school? You know, the little girls that the girl's going to go, um, it could be a boy. It could be a girl. Mom and dad, get over it. You know, no, like, but I, no, but there's this girl I like. Right. 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 It, yeah. You know, you hope that they have the courage to do that thing. I just, I hope parents can turn around and start to, well, you know, is there anyone at school that you like? And I think now, you know, parents of, uh, you know, 12 to 15 year old, you know, child, they're still young enough by and large, still young enough to have gone through this, to been part of this change in society. The anyway. parents. The parents. Yeah. So that there wouldn't be that. Right. You know, they might frame it as, oh, do you have a boyfriend? You know, to a girl and, <laughs> you know, just out of habit or just kind of, you know, whatever. But then, you know, when she says, well, no, there's this girl. I would hope that most of them now are progressive enough that they're like, oh, OK. Okay. And Hopefully. I'm sure they're not. No, you know, yeah. I just think, you know, from the start, but it goes don't in, specify a gender. Well, changes in society kind of go in stages based on generation, right? And I think that it's going to get easier and it's going to get better. It just might still take a while for. Yeah, and all again, the... maybe some of the good stuff of these this sort of movie, Happiest Season, is maybe it does help people to see how stressful and traumatic it is Mm -hmm. to have to do a coming out Mm -hmm. that maybe parents will start to realize i don't want my child to go through that stress i want them to be able to just you know tell me anything and 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 i really do think again i'm not a parent so i can't say but i think it would be up to the parents to to open that up early enough so that kids actually know everything's an option you know and um so maybe maybe ha- these coming there is a purpose to having these still there is because it is gut wrenching yeah. and it is horrible to have to watch someone deal with something like that and and you know to have to make a big production to just tell your family who you are it yeah. just doesn't make any sense and and I just hope that whatever the purpose is there's all good behind it and um and people will open up. Yeah, and it's really unfair to the child, but the parents, you know, if, if you are blindsided by your child coming out, then you did not pay enough attention to things as they were growing up. Because there are always, there's always little things that, that you know, kind of kind of give you an, an idea. That, Possibly, I don't know. Yeah. Well, I'm speaking from experience, you know. Yes, uh, there are. And if you're blindsided, you know, that's on that's on the parents. I I believe. Okay. I think I think kids are good at keeping things inside though and keeping things hidden. I really do. Especially when they feel different. Yep. Um there are some things you can't, but but I do think there's a lot that people can keep inside. Sure. So, anyway, yeah. Anyway, so Happiest Season on Hulu. I do recommend it even though I maybe sounded negative about it. Um, but be prepared. It is really tough to watch, but there's a lot that can come out good and bad. And and um, and hopefully people do learn from it as well. Yeah. And bear in mind, it's labeled as a rom com, but it sounds like a drama with lighter moments. Yeah. And honestly, I can't even think of the lighter moments. <laughs> it's, okay. You know, it was it was um, much more intense than I was expecting. Sure. Um, but everyone's great in mm-hmm. it. Very, very good. So, good. Yeah. All right. That took up a lot of time. So let's see. Uh, next one you actually watched. So what? on Thanksgiving Day um, on HBO Max, you can. No, that didn't make any sense. We watched this on Thanksgiving Day, um, a movie called Super Intelligence. Yes. And this is on HBO Max. You can go and watch it. This is with Melissa McCarthy and Bobby Cannavale, um, written, directed by Ben Falcone, Melissa's husband. Mm -hmm. Um, James Corden's voice is in there, which, you know, we'll talk about that. Um, So this was Super Intelligence. This was based on basically um, AI becoming aware and trying to determine um, if humanity is worth saving. And so this AI finds Melissa McCarthy as like an average Joe saying, let me follow you around for three days Mm -hmm. and I'll determine if humanity is worth saving. Otherwise, I'll destroy all of you. Mm -hmm. Um, And it kind of, that's that's what we're dealing with. Yep. I loved it. 
I did. I thought it was great. It was really well done. I didn't know what to think about it going in. Um, you know, I agreed to watch with you as yeah, uh, kind well, of just it's Melissa McCarthy. Well, yeah, I didn't. I figured it would be at least funny parts, but, right? But the, the the way it was done and the way it was written and man, it just sucked me in. And it was it was really I I enjoyed it thoroughly. It was so. This is definitely not. If you think back of what the two of them have done together, this was definitely different. It was, it's not over the top. It is not, um, her physical comedy. Right. It is not her with a wig on and a different voice. And I think that's why I enjoyed it more. Right. It's very much, um, a straight movie. I mean, it's funny, um, in parts, but Mm -hmm. it's also very sweet and lovely because, you know, he basically says, if you knew the world was going to end in three days, what would you do? Mm-hmm. He says to her, and she says, I would fix things with my ex. And that's Bobby Cannavale. And so then it's about really how can, can that be fixed? Mm-hmm. You know, and how can, how can you, how would you spend that time? Um, and if it's the end of the world, what are you going to do? And that's really, really very, at the very end, what are, what would you do? Mm-hmm. Um, and how does humanity play a part in that? Right. Um, yeah, it was, it was, funny there's definitely funny parts um i'm i'm not a james corden fan um i don't know why they don't realize there are other people in the world that can do some of these jobs but but whatever oh see Um, i i thought his the choice of his voice is really good mm -hmm. (laughs) and if you don't like him yeah you're not gonna think that but it's not like it annoyed me or anything i think it Um, did it's just that there could have been anyone. It sounds it like could it have been anyone. You. No, it just could have been anyone. Okay. But, All right. Well, stop, um, stop pushing. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, I, I, I really enjoyed it too. I thought it was really lovely and yeah. sweet and um, good people in it. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, and it could have gone a lot of different ways. Um, and I, and basically I was appreciative along the way. I was appreciative of every way that it went. Because, you know, every decision point in the movie could have gone several different ways. And I'm like, ah, that would have, you know, thinking about it, thinking back on it. Or at the time, it's like, boy, I hope this doesn't happen. (laughs) And it didn't. Right. So it was kind of like it was it went. I thought it went perfectly for for the story. Um, Yeah. And in the end, I I ended up really, really liking it. Yeah. I saw somewhere a headline where someone said, you know, Ben needs to stop being allowed to make movies for the two of them or something. And I thought, what's wrong with you? You know, again. I, you know, you have to take a movie like this just at face value. Do I know if any of the technical jargon they were talking about made any sense? I don't. Um, but that's fine. And, um, you know, it was just enjoyable. Yeah, I don't. I'll go so far as to say I don't understand what that person is saying. Because <laughs> because the movie was great, regardless of who did it. Um, and if you didn't know that it was him. You would have you wouldn't know that it was him. You know what I'm saying? In other words, it it felt like such right, a right. such a natural movie for her, right? That you 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 don't necessarily need to know that it was written with her in mind, right? right from her husband, right? So and in this, you know, so I guess they did this movie two years ago, and it's just gotten pushed and everything. And what a perfect time for this sort mm-hmm. of movie to come out because it is about just being kind. It's about loving um people and mm-hmm. not you know messing the head up for something stupid um and that's that's what's important and they put together this whole side thing 20 days of kindness um website together where they spent 20 days um g- donating money and doing all these kind things and that's another and again it's another reason that for me I like them and um appreciate that mm-hmm. they're that there's more there's true meaning behind the movie versus just be good. You know, mm-hmm. that they're, they're actually living it too. Right. Um, and so I, I, yeah, I, I really loved it. I, I think it's something I definitely am going to want to watch again and, um, really get more into it. You yeah. Know? Yeah. And the guy that played Dennis, I think. Lil uh, Ray. Who? Lil Ray. Was that who that was? Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. He's good. Uh, yeah. That was my first time seeing him. And that was, that was. You said did you see that? I don't know. Let's just move on <laughs> okay. with it being my first time seeing this guy. Yeah. And he, I thought he was great. He was, he was part of the entertainment for me. 
Okay. Yeah. yeah. Big yeah, part of the entertainment. Sure. Yeah. He was, he was good. Yeah. Okay, so that's Super Intelligence. You can watch that on HBO Max. Mm -hmm. Next movie we just watched yesterday um, is called Godmothered <coughs> on Disney+. Plus. Yep. This stars Jillian Bell and Isla Fisher. Mm -hmm. uh, Jane Curtin's in there, too, which I didn't know she was in there, so that was cool. Um, what did you think? <laughs> <laughs> so this was another one where I knew it was something you wanted to watch, and I said I would watch something with you, so I said, okay, let's have at it. Kind of open mind. Um it was it was it probably wouldn't have been anything I would have watched on my own. Of course not. Yeah. Right. So, um, but basically, I don't know. Five minutes into <laughs> it, I was like, "Oh, I like this. <laughs> I really like this. Yeah. This is this is gonna be okay unless it gets dumb, and it never got dumb." Right. So, um, I really like Jillian Bell. Yeah, I love her um, so much. You know, and Isla Fisher. Uh, I've seen in several other things. This was a little bit different for her. Mm -hmm. Um. But the two of them together was, I just really enjoyed it. It was really yeah. good. And and the story was fanciful enough right. that, you know, it was it was what it was supposed to be. Yeah. Yet grounded enough that it wasn't like, what? Yeah. You know, that's, that's, that's crazy. Yeah. So the story goes that uh, Jillian Bell's character, Eleanor, um, is a new trainee in the motherland, which is where all the fairy godmothers live and get trained. And um, it turns out that no, there's no spirit anymore in the world and no one asks fairy, for fairy godmothers assistance anymore. And so the motherland is about to shut down and she freaks out about this. And she's like, there's gotta be someone out there that needs help. She finds a letter <laughs> stashed away as an assignment from a 10 year old girl and goes um, to Boston to find her and it turns out she's grown up as isla fisher now and so she's like well okay i'm gonna f i'm gonna figure out how to give you your happily ever after anyways mm -hmm. um and that's where everything starts you know so it, it felt a lot to me like enchanted um where amy mm -hmm. adams you know yeah. comes into the real world and so you've got this mixture of this fairy tale world with the real world right. and how dark the real world can be against right. the fairy tale world um, and so, yeah, I, I loved it too. I loved, you know, what I loved was the whole premise of the fairy godmother and Jane Curtin being the head one had come up with this formula that worked every time for the happily ever after. Right. And it's you, you change the dress into a sparkly glittery dress. You get a pumpkin into a carriage and you find the prince and they, and they true love and they live happily ever after. And that's the formula. That's all that matters. Yeah. And so Jillian Bell in the real world starts in on that formula. Who is, who's going to be her true love. Mm -hmm. And um, I love that there was a modern twist on it, that that necessarily is not a spouse or a partner. Mm -hmm. um, and that you can find your happily ever after with whomever you choose. Um, and, that was a that I was very very happy that that was how it came about because halfway through I was like oh god if they really do this thing where this guy and her end up falling in love and blah 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 mm -hmm. I was kind of like that's gonna ruin this for mm -hmm. me um so yeah I you know again Jill, it was very funny watching Jillian Bell be so fairy godmother like yeah, you know d disconnected from the reality of our world yeah because i expected her to be like a rough fairy godmother mm -hmm. like i expected that was going to be the joke of the movie <laughs> and yet she was not she was very enchanted and and, yes. and always you know and very so, upbeat and and flowery and that fake little voice and stuff i loved yeah. it i just loved it so yeah. yeah i thought it was really good it just I, came out friday yeah I thought it was really good too. Good. Yeah. yeah. I'm in, I'm glad we watched it. I enjoyed it. <laughs> I'm and I'll watch it again. <laughs> yeah, I will too. Yeah, it it was definitely worth it. And the kids were great. There's this girl and I assume if that's her voice that sings at the end. What a fantastic voice yeah, she has. Yeah, you'll be seeing her again if that's her voice. Yeah. Um so very good all the way around. That's Godmothered on Disney Plus. Yep. Yay. Watch it. Okay. Uh the next thing I'm going to talk about is actually a short on Netflix called If Anything Happens, I Love You. At this point, everyone's probably watched it. Everyone's probably heard about it. It was a, um, even after I watched it, it became a thing on TikTok that people were filming themselves watching it. Um, it's a 12 minute short. All I'm going to really say is just go to Netflix, search for it. If Anything Happens, I Love You and watch it. It's a wonderful little animated um, short, uh, have tissues, and it's basically about parents grieving the loss of their child. 
Um, but it's gorgeous and beautiful and everyone should watch it. Mm-hmm. That's all I'm going to say. I think that's perfectly summed up. Yeah. Um, the next thing was a little documentary that we watched on HBO called The Mystery of D.B. Cooper. Mm-hmm. Um, sure. I thought we'd talk about that quickly just because we did watch it. And, um, you know, I think I started out before we watched it because we both. Mm-hmm. It's funny because, you know, John watches a lot of the weird, you know, mystery, ancient aliens, whatever stuff that is. And oh, we, you look so pained. We never, you okay? yeah, but we never, um, we never really come together on a lot of conspiracy theories or whatever. Right. But I do love the DB Cooper story. So it was interesting for the two of us to be able to sit down and watch something like that. Right. Yeah. And I, this was interesting. It to was me. good. Well, it was really interesting to me because, uh, I learned a lot of things that I hadn't, hadn't heard yeah. of before. Um, I do watch a lot of history and discovery and, and Nat Geo and things like that. And they have shows on like this Mm -hmm. periodically. And I've seen several on DB Cooper, but this was the first time I heard that there were really that many potential, uh, suspects with, with pretty strong (laughs) evidence. Right. Cause the, 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 was it three or four? It was four. And so they go through these four suspects. These are people who are admitting that they were db cooper and so each time they would start the first one i was like oh so that person's lying move on and then they'd come back and they'd be like but this happened with this person you know and they would give right. this real evidence that that really could be the person and and so it was well it's very strange so for me every time they did that <laughs> i made the decision oh okay that's the person <laughs> that's db cooper right. and then they move back to another suspect and fill in a little more information and be like, oh, okay, that's, <laughs> so that yeah, I was one. wrong. Right. This is the one. <laughs> and they move on to the next one. It's like, hey, wait a minute. There's right. four people that are D.B. Cooper. <laughs> right. It's like you watching know? Law and Order. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. <clears throat> and we don't know. And, we, and still, we just don't know. Well, so the upshot of the deal is if you care, uh, <laughs> you know, people listening, um, it's it's still unsolved, but they ended up closing the case. Right. They did close the case. They, they decided it was unsolvable. It had been open so long. Um, it It's closed and... And remains the only unsolved plane hijacking, hijacking in, America. in America. Yep. Um, and, and who knows? You know, again, to me, I don't think that anyone could survive a jump like that. I just don't. Um, so that's kind of been my stance from day one. Well, you can't say that because six months later... A guy did the exact same thing, and who is one of the suspects? Yeah, he did the exact same thing. It wasn't exact though; it wasn't in the rain and at night. Well, okay, but he but he did the same thing. My so. thing is, is how do you see the ground? How do you know? You know, I just don't. I just don't believe. You know, you don't know if you're going into trees. Like, well, you, he yeah. didn't time any of that sort of stuff. He so. did time that stuff. Mm. Okay, agree to disagree. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. It's a very fascinating story. It's it a is. very fascinating case. Yeah. And this was really well done. You'll you'll kind of sit there. It's it's like watching Unsolved Mysteries for me, which I hate, yeah. you know, because it's like, oh, what is the answer? Yeah. Um, but it is interesting to know that there are people out there that are willing to say that they were. Yeah, I will say if you're interested <laughs> at all in this story or in the, the tale of D.B. Cooper, um, you're you're you will be. This is this will be different. This yeah. will be additional stuff that you've never heard before. Um, so it was very interesting to me. Um, and I wouldn't say that I'm a DB Cooper nut. I just I'm yeah, aware no. of it. Yeah, exactly. And mildly interested when the subject comes up. So you don't really have to be into this, right? To to get a lot from this documentary. Because it's, it's a cool story. It's a cool story, and it, and the way this was done was really interesting. Yeah. So that was on HBO. So it's probably on HBO Max now. Mm-hmm. So definitely. Check that out. It's called The Mystery of D.B. Cooper. Yep. All right. So that is all of the movies that I have. Mm-hmm. I still have a bunch of television and we still have Hugh Grant. Um, so since we're at almost an hour, I think what we're going to do is we're going to split this into two parts. Yep. And I'll release two separate podcasts still on the same day. But let's go ahead and end this here and come back for part two for television and for <laughs> Hugh Grant. Sounds like it's a good idea. All right. We'll be back. Bye. 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 <laughs>